ग्रोइंग अप देर वर समोज दैट आई रियली एंजॉयड वॉचिंग बट मुझे ये कभी समझ में नहीं आया कि मुझे ये एग्जैक्टली exactly क्यों पसंद आते थे वन सच शो वो सारा भाई वर्सेज सारा भाई आज तो इस शो के बारे में सबको पता है बट डू यू नो जब ये शो पहले रिलीज हुआ था ना वे बैक इन टू थाउजेंड फोर इसका टी आर पी वॉज जस्ट पॉइंट सिक्स थ्री टी आर पी को सिंपल भाषा में समझ सकते हो एज वॉट परसेंटेज ऑफ द टोटल टीवी ऑडियंस वॉज वॉचिंग दिस शो कंपेरिजन के लिए स्टार वन पर ही एक दूसरा शो आता था कॉल दी ग्रेट इंडियन लाफ्टर चैलेंज इसका टी आर पी था नाइन डिफरेंस देख रहे हो ना मोस्ट पीपल डेंट इवन अंडरस्टैंड वट सारा भाई वर्स एस सारा भाई वॉज ऑल अबाउट Just based on that, some could say that it was a flop show, but I think it was actually groundbreaking and far ahead of its time. So, in this video, I want to do some overthinking and really solve my childhood mystery. What was special in this show? What made it feel so fresh and so unlike anything else on television? On one level, Sara Bai vs Sara Bai is just another family comedy show. An upper-class Gujarati family living in a luxury apartment in South Bombay, um, Mumbai, South Mumbai. Please don't kill me. The family consists of Maya and Indrafadan Sarabhai with their three children Sahil, Sonia and Roshesh. Sahil is a cosmetologist by profession and is married to Monisha whose middle class habits bother Maya and are a topic for majority of the show's humor. Main to gana ga rahi thi. Teri nani mari to main kya karu? Ye gana hai ya talk show hai? Sonia I think uh, is a mystic fortune teller of some kind and Roshesh um agar bachani hai hame hamari country to jeli ko banana chahiye desh ka pradhan mantri is a poet 90s ke time se there is one show that some might think is very similar to Sara Bai versus Sara Bai and that is remember Tutu Mai Mai was also the story of arguments, love and hate between the Bahu Radha and the Sasuma Devki. If you squint your eyes, it might seem like Sara Bai versus Sara Bai is kinda like Tutu Mai Mai, both playing on the Saas Bahu nook joke. But I think that is just superficial observation. Sara Bai versus Sara Bai in sare shows se bahut alag hai. In fact, I would dare to say that no other show even comes close to it. Why? The first reason is that it has something that no popular show in India has. and that is satire and in particular horatian satire okay no time according to the oxford dictionary satire ek poem novel film ya koi work of art ho sakti hai that uses humor irony exaggeration or ridicule to expose and criticize the prevailing immorality or foolishness of our society satire do kism ki hoti hai horatian satire and juvelian satire Horatian satire is the fun light-hearted kind of satire named after the Roman satirist Horace. He wrote to gently ridicule the dominant opinions of ancient Rome and Greece. Instead of using harsh tones, Horatian satire uses wit, exaggeration and self-deprecating humor. Some examples from the West are South Park or Saturday Night Live, which regularly poke fun at the quirks of the American society. Close to home, we had Office Office that was a good example of Horatian satire as it made fun of the long, painful, mind-numbing process of getting anything done in government offices in that time. The other kind of satire is Juvelian satire, named after Juvelin, another satirist from Rome. This satire is harsher. Unlike Horatian, it is not focused so much on humor but on pointing out the evils of the society. Some examples are the novels like Animal Farm 1984 or the movie Clockwork Orange, which imagine dystopian realities in the future. And close to home, we have Chaitanya Tamhane's national award-winning film The Court, which talks about how mind-numbing and downright tragic India's judicial system can be. Sara Bai vs Sara Bai is filled with Horatian satire, the light hearted kind halaki manisha bhikariyon se chutta mangti hai cocktail pe sajayi hui chhatri nikal kar ke use collect karti hai sadak pe khadi hui gaay ko aise 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 se karti hai aloo ka paratha mama to fully appreciate the show you have to understand the context in which it was made the show came on star 1 which was introduced for india's urban upper middle class in 2004 jab ye show release hua tha na india ki economic engine kick start ho chuki thi the liberalization policies of the 90s were bearing fruits and that caused the rise of the upper middle class in india ye wo time tha jab india aspirational ho raha tha indian values were mixing with western aspirations through films like hum tum ya kal ho na ho indo western music chocolates even like snicker we started living in this indo western composite culture something that we are still living in 
सारा भाई वर्सेस सारा भाई उस सेटिंग में ग्राउंडेड थी शो के टाइटल को भी ले लो सारा भाई वर्सेस सारा भाई नाम में जो दो सारा भाई फैमिलीज हैं वो दो इंडिया को रिप्रेजेंट करती हैं। वन इंडिया ऑफ द स्मॉल टाउन्स एंड अनादर ऑफ द बिग सिटीज मोनिशा ग्रो अपना प्रॉपर मिडिल क्लास फैमिली इन पंजाब हर नेम ओरिजिनली इन द शो वॉज मनीषा विच वॉज जज टू बी टू मिडिल क्लास बाई माया सो इट वॉज री नेम टू मोनिशा वेन शी ज्वाइन द फैमिली मोनिशा नहीं उसका नाम मनीषा है मनीषा इज टू मिडिल क्लास मोनिशा Maya on the other hand was born to an affluent Gujarati family so they both represent the two ends of the spectrum they are each complemented by Indravadan and Roshesh who lean towards them and then there is the balancing anchor Sahil at the very center who is a device for the audience to relate with every node in the schematic diagram is fully fleshed out the comedy in Sarabhai versus Sarabhai comes not just from the plot but also the organic clash of these interesting characters this structure literally shows up in many scenes with sahil at the center and the two pairs being on each of the sides the left side of the structure is the india of the small towns even though indravadan is now part of the upper class he represents those indian men who grew up in a middle class family and made their way to the top which is why he is the only one in the family who can truly empathize with monisha Roshesh represents the pampered mama's boy from South Bombay. He indulges in artistic pursuits like poetry and theater that have a reformist vibe to them, but they are nevertheless superficial because he had to never struggle for a day in his life. Sahil being the eldest child and a doctor working for the common people and married to a middle class woman has a foot on both of these sides and therefore he can relate to both of them equally. Monisha represents the middle class India. She leaves no stone unturned to save any amount of money. Her character is the exaggerated version of our everyday aunties who take bargaining to the extreme. Maya on the other hand represents the upper class and is shown to be vain and hypocritical. Instead of caring about money, she claims to care about art, aesthetics, social welfare, conducting high profile events with her friends, the softer things of life. but all of this coming from a place of vanity and hypocrisy for example in one of these episodes maya is shown raising charity for children suffering from alcohol addiction by organizing a cocktail party maya praising the absurd poetry of roshesh is intended to parody the high falutin art that the rich patronize to appear cultured and civilized we frequently see that art is an integral part of maya social gatherings but here art is appropriated to value signal and show off rokha sukha ho मुझे कम ही चाहिए सब कुछ क्योंकि मैं लुखा हूँ There is a linguistic side to this also. Monisha is shown not to be very proficient in English. She is quickly reminded by Maya who uses a lot of complex English words that her language is utterly middle class and she instead asks her to use the English translations of those phrases. Monisha like most middle class Indian housewives watches drama shows like Uska Pati Sirf Mera hai and plays games like Antakshari. Maya on the other hand is shown to be proficient in the more intelligent games like Scrabble. Here's the catch though. Maya does indulge in several things that she complains Monisha about. For example, she tells Monisha that Antakshari is a middle class game, but then in the same episode she herself plays a game with her friends. While she rolls her eyes when Monisha talks about the many babas or observes Mannat, she has no problem when her own daughter is a psychic. Wo jante hai bhoot prat ko bulana? Monisha, please. Bhoot prat keh kar ke usse cheapen mat karo. It's called Atma Ropan Prayog. That sounds classier. The significance of this hypocrisy is to show that while on the surface Monisha is clearly not as good, smart, classy or intelligent as Maya, deep down Maya actually uses Monisha to feel better about herself. This becomes clear in two episodes. The first one where Roshesh starts dating this girl called Matsya Gandha. short form maggie who turns out to be even more sophisticated by maya standards while maya smirks and tells her that the family is vegetarian maggie retorts saying that she is actually a vegan and that she cares for animals maya gets impressed by maggie initially and says that she has a lot of panache but later she realizes that she is too exotic and has started to influence roshesh and therefore she even lets out the word sweet for monisha after getting a taste of her own medicine maine mannat maangi जिस दिन रोशिश भैया वापस आएंगे ना उस दिन मैं चल के सिद्धि विनायक मंदिर जाऊंगी स्वीट क्या आपने मुझे स्वीट कहा मैं स्वीट थियरी ऑफ रिलेटिविटी बेटा उस मैगी के सामने तो तुम्हारी मिडिल क्लास ही थी अच्छी 
I personally feel that this is a dig at the upper class Indians who move out of India because of all its problems and then later realize that they aren't taken seriously over there and so they fall in love with India's quirks again. Maya has that sort of relationship with Monisha. She needs Monisha to feel good about herself and feel powerful. This is said in the most literal way in the episode where Monisha literally becomes upper class and they both end up being unhappy because their established roles have been flipped. This is the magic of satire. Sarabhai vs Sarabhai satire elevates it from comedy and it is no longer just a comedy show. It transforms into social commentary. On the surface, it highlights and parodies the cheapness of the middle class, something that no other show even dares to do. But at the same time, it exposes the hypocrisy and more precisely, the insecurity of the upper class. It was this key element that made the show different from shows like Tutu Meme, where comedy was only grounded in punchlines and the plot. While Sarabhai vs Sarabhai has that, it also has a big foundation to place itself on, which is the larger social significance of the show. While this concept is interesting, if this was all that the show applied, the show would soon become very formal-like. What keeps the show interesting is that it is complemented by supremely good writing by Atish Kapadia ji. The punchlines are very well paced and a melange of comedy styles is used. In some places, the show uses a very Indian style of comedy, such as the physical humor as we see played by Johnny Lever Sir. And then in some places, it resorts to teasing, almost like how Kapil Sharma roasts his characters in sketches. And then there are places where the humor breaks away from this build-up punchline structure and becomes much more layered and complex by using elements such as sarcasm, irony, puns and wit, which are all commonly found in Western shows like The Office and Monty Python. Take it from me. <laughs> take it take it from me. Oh. <laughs> it is this mix of Indian and Western flavors that makes the show so unique. Not only is the topic about clash of India and the West, but so is its treatment. This gives the show a very unique coherence. The main power balance structure also keeps flipping from one episode to another. For example, while Sahil is always balanced, when it comes to bullying Roshesh, the very calm Sahil pairs with Indravadan to roast him, while Monisha and Maya come together in being Roshesh's gentle support. This kind of flexibility keeps the intra-character relationship dynamic. The show also feels pleasurable to watch because of several other factors that usually go unnoticed. For example, the background music is really well composed and the use of laugh tracks is very minimal. The set design of the show is really well done and the architecture itself becomes a character. Maya's house feels very posh with the Mona Lisa painting set against the defining columns contrasted against the earthy warm tones while Monisha's apartment feels very messy and cluttered. Many actors in the show like Satish Shah Ji, Ratna Pathak Ma'am and Sumit Sir have all backgrounds in theatre. That explains why the show sometimes feels much more like a theatre play than a TV sitcom. While we are on actors, let's talk about a detour. While the main cast of Sarabhai vs Sarabhai is amazing, I think a lot of the zing in the show is added by the side characters. Consider Madhu Bhai who is hard of hearing and constantly keeps saying hey, or Dushant who takes his tech job so seriously that he leaves no chance unturned to use Roshesh to present a demo. These characters complement the satirical vibe of the show with an absurdist vibe. They are not supposed to be relatable, but they are there to symbolize the bizarre and absurd that real life is filled with. Absurdism takes things to the extreme, it does exaggeration to absurd lengths. For example, consider this one episode where Maya is very sad that Popat Kaka has passed away. But Indravadan being Indravadan breaks into a musical performance and this absurdist contrast makes for great humor. While satire highlights aspects of society, which we notice but don't think of, absurdist humor reminds that the world is bizarre, mad, and honestly, does not have any fixed purpose. Okay, no time again. Absurdism is actually a branch of philosophy that tries to answer the question that all of philosophy is trying to answer. What is the meaning of life? The absurdist's answer is that there is no purpose to life. It is similar to the explanation by existentialism and nihilism. Nihilism looks at the meaninglessness with the eye of pessimism and despair, while existentialism sees it as liberating. Because there is no meaning, you are free to make your own meaning and choose what you want to do in life. 
Absurdism is similar to existentialism, but instead of focusing on the purpose of life, it wants you to embrace the absurd, the craziness and the randomness of the universe. Everything need not have a meaning and that chaos is okay. Absurdism is what separates millennial humor from Gen Z humor. While millennial humor is simpler, focusing on this build-up punchline structure, Gen Z humor might seem kinda confusing to people because it is so absurd, so random. So, makes you think, why? What? In a world where absurd is the norm, and I'm talking about the pandemic, the war, the scandal and the slaps, embracing the randomness can be liberating. Before Sarabhai vs Sarabhai, JD Sir and Atish Ji had worked on a show that is truly grounded in absurdism in a way that makes even Sarabhai vs Sarabhai look tame and that was Khichdi. Khichdi is both deeply satirical and absurdist. It had characters like Pruffal who was so dumb but extremely confident, Hansa who was extremely lazy but simple, Himanshu who was downright hysterical and Jayashri who on the surface was a single widowed mother but in truth was the gangster of the house. Right from the name of the show, which had no connection with the plot, the show parodied everything that the society then considered sacred and valuable. In the early 2000s, shows were expected to be moral, to be educational and informative, resulting in this series of formal-like shows that didn't make you think or intellectually challenged. Khichdi then came out of the blue as a show that introduced absurdism in a new light in India. According to Adishji, the show really came from a place of anger, a kind of revolution and fury against the established norms of that time. To really appreciate the significance of Sarabhai vs Sarabhai, you have to see it in the context of the shows that were made before and after by JD and Adishji. Kichdi, Sarabhai vs Sarabhai and Babahu and Baby, all three shows imagined the Indian family in different ways. Kichdi was absurdist and not relatable, but Babahu and Baby was more sincere, palatable, emotional and all that. Sarabhai vs Sarabhai lies exactly in between. It has elements of absurdism that it takes from Kichdi, but is also grounded in the present society like Babahu and Baby. It is both bizarre and yet relatable. This is why I think Sarabhai vs Sarabhai was the culmination of so many different values. Well, like many successful shows, Sarabhai vs Sarabhai's own success became its biggest obstacle. When the show was released for a second season on Hotstar in 2017, the audience felt a lot of what made the show so important was missing. The strongest aspect of season 1 was the time in which it was set. The time when the clash of the middle class and the upper class was the most relevant in India. The second season lacked that kind of grand narrative, the underlying message to the show. My takeaway from making this video is realizing that while good comedy makes you laugh, great comedy actually makes you think. It tells you things that nobody else is talking about in a manner that difficult topics are easier to digest. Comedy can be a way to show anger without offending anyone. That is why the writer of the show, Atish Kapadiaji, transcends the role of the writer and becomes a social commentator. Sarabhai vs Sarabhai was truly ahead of its time. It was truly iconic. Thank you everyone for watching this video. I'm so excited to know that there is a new season of Sarabhai vs Sarabhai in the news. Yay! If you haven't watched the show, I highly, highly, highly recommend that you do try. It's on Hotstar and available to watch for free. A big, big, big shout out to all the YouTube members of India and Pixels. I'm so grateful to you for supporting this channel. If you want to connect with other like-minded people from the India and Pixels community, please consider joining our Discord community. Alright. Also guys, big news, we will soon be having a course on how to tell stories with data visualization presented by yours truly very soon. Follow Indian Pixels on Twitter to know more about when we release the course. I'll see you again in another video.